Hey guys, welcome back to Edimoon Tutorials on Database Management Systems. This is Vidya and in today's lecture we are going to discuss the fourth chapter, second topic which is functional dependency and throughout this video we are going to see what is functional dependency, what are the reasonings about the functional dependency, what is closure of functional dependency. Finally, we will conclude this video by looking at examples of functional dependencies uh, between the attributes. So let's start this video by understanding what functional dependency exactly is. So guys, a functional dependency is a kind of integrity constraint that generalizes the concept of a key. See, it's a, it is something that generalizes the concept of a key. We know what key is. Key is a set of attributes or a single attribute that is a part of a relation. Sometimes it is uh, used for identifying the tuples uniquely. Then we call it as a primary key. If a combination can uniquely identify uh, another uh, attribute, then we say it a candidate key and all of that. So FD is something that is used to generalize the concept of keys. Right. So let us suppose a relation instance, I mean relational schema capital R and let us take X and Y be non-empty set of attributes in that particular R relational schema. So X and Y are two uh, different sets of attributes. It can be two uh, columns or it can be three columns. For example, uh, let me suppose a student's table which has student ID, his name, his age and then his address or contact number. In X, I can take the uh, attributes like student ID and name. So X usually has the student ID and name and all the other uh, leftover columns are considered as Y. Right. So uh, an instance small r of the relational schema that we have taken satisfies the functional dependency such that X defines Y here. The arrow operator is something that we use for uh, uh, symbolizing the uh, functional dependency. Here we are saying uh, we are saying x derives y. It holds if the following conditions uh, hold for every pair of tuples t1 and t2. So t1 and t2 are two tuples from the relation instance R of the relational schema, right? So uh, we say that these two, uh, that particular relation or the instance satisfies the functional dependency that, uh, that x defines y if t1 dot x is equal to t2 dot x then t1 dot y is also equal to t2 dot y. This says that for example if there are two tuples with same x values then their y value should also match. As simple as that if at all there is uh, two details about two students who has similar SID and also who has the same name then of course their y values will also be the uh, same right. So that is what a functional dependency is. So this says that if two tuples agree on the values in the attributes x, they must also agree on the attributes of y. Right. So a primary key uh, is a special case of functional dependency. Guys, okay? see, uh, the functional dependency plays a very vital role in the relation database design and it is also used in normalization. Normalization is something that is that helps us to, you know, if at all I, I have a very large table and I want to you know decompose that table into smaller set of tables then I look at these functional dependencies and I'll try to reduce the table by considering this uh, functional dependencies so that the data redundancy and also the inconsistency in the data will be reduced so it is used for that purpose so it plays a very vital role in the relational database design and also the normalization now that you know what functional dependencies are let me define a very simple example that that will be easy for you to remember and understand what functional dependency is right so a functional dependency is basically a relationship between the attributes right it can be uh, x which is a set of minimal attributes and y which is a set of other attributes but it is basically a relationship between the attributes the attribute sets can be the key attributes it's a relationship between the key attributes and the non-key attributes so uh, when we are saying that uh, x defines y, we are saying uh, x is the determinant and y is the dependent. Here y depends on the x for retrieving its value. That means y is existent dependent on x. For example, according to our example uh, students table, in x we have student id and name. In, in y we have his contact, his uh, address and his age. So with the help of x, you can identify the person in that y right that means y is existent dependent on x so this is uh, how we you know 
सिंबलाइज अ फंक्शनल डिपेंडेंसी सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट फंक्शनल डिपेंडेंसी नाउ लेट्स लुक एट अ वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल राइट सो गाइस दिस इज एन एम्प्लॉज टेबल एंड दिस एम्प्लॉज टेबल हैज फोर कॉलम्स नेमली एम्प्लॉय आई डी हिस्स नेम एड्रेस एंड फोन नंबर सो वॉट इज एक्स हियर द की एट्रीब्यूट विच इज एम्प्लॉय आई डी एंड वॉट इज वाई इट इज अ डिपेंडेंट ऑल द अदर कॉलम्स एक्सेप्ट द एक्स कॉलम्स राइट हियर यू कैन टेक द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ एम्प्लॉय आई डी एंड नेम एज वेल यू कैन टेक एदर एम्प्लॉय आई डी और कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ एम्प्लॉय आई डी एंड नेम राइट सो नाउ दैट वी नो वॉट फंक्शनल डिपेंडेंसीज आर लेट्स understand the reasoning about functional dependency there are few conditions that are to be met uh, to you know say that a particular relation holds a functional dependency there are certain conditions to be satisfied let's look at what are those conditions and what are the different underlying functional dependencies that should be satisfied in order to say a particular table holds a particular functional dependency right so given a set of functional dependencies over a relational scheme of capital r typically every uh additional fds holds over r whenever all the given fds holds so you can say a particular fd holds on a particular relational instance only if all the fds that uh you know hold, that are there in that particular relational schema holds or satisfies chill you'll understand it better when you see an example right so let us look at an example which is worker stable so we basically have uh, five columns like ssn name lot did and since from since uh, when they are working right so uh, as we know here ssn is a primary key because it is underlined now here <clears throat> the functional dependency is that ssn defines the did right this is the functional dependency we have so uh, with the help of ssn you can see which employee is working on this department but there is an underlying functional dependency inside depending upon the did department id only know we will define the lot size of that particular department so underlying there is a functional dependency between the did to lot right so if at all uh, you want this to satisfy you must also ensure that this also satisfies or holds on that particular instance i think it's clear so If two tuples have same SSN, they should have same uh, DID and lot also, right? It's it's as simple as that. If at all uh, we are storing the SSN of same person two times, then of course, when do sir lo same uh, uh, DID and same lot ka wali because we are storing the same person's details, right? So when we are saying SSN uh, arrow DID and DID arrow lot, we are indirectly saying that. ssn also defines lot this should also hold on works only then you can say this particular thing holds on that particular instance right so it should satisfy all the dependencies to be if implied we say a particular functional dependency is implied on a particular table only if satisfies all the functional dependencies along with the underlying functional dependencies of that particular instance right so uh let us look at a closure of a set of function dependencies you can never say that uh, in a particular table there is only one function dependency because there is no such thing there can be a set of function dependencies in a particular table and you can say a particular function dependency holds on a particular instance only if and only if it satisfies all the function dependencies right the set of all function dependencies implied by a given set of fds is called the closure of fd which is uh, denoted as f star so like i said it has a collection of uh, fds so that collection is known as the closure of f which is symbolized as f plus right so compute the yeah uh, so since we said it should hold all those fds we should first compute the f plus of the fds right so how are we going to do that first we have three rules which are called armstrong axioms to be followed so each time you apply this repeatedly to compute the uh, fds implied by that particular set of um, function dependencies so let's look at those three armstrong axioms so we have x y and z 
which are the sets of attributes of that particular instance that we have considered or taken. Then we have the three rules which are reflexivity, augmentation and transitivity. So uh, let us look at each of them and I will also take an example in the, the student's example. I will explain them as well. Right. So first condition is that if x is a superset of y, that means y is a subset of x. The attributes that are present in y are also present in the x. Right. If that is there, then x determines y. Uh, and yeah, uh, the arrow symbol that we are using in the functional dependency, we call this as determines. Right. Because uh, x is a determinant and y is a dependent. So x determines y. Right. So yeah, uh, if x is a superset of y, then x determines y. Let, let me take an example. Now in the x, we have the student ID. We have student ID and his name and y we have his name of course y is a subset of uh, x so yeah x can determine y right so second condition is that augmentation <clears throat> if x determines y then x z determines y z for any z now i am taking another attribute i can mix that and i can combine them on both the sides if x determines y then x z should also determine y z for example, according to our example, we have student ID and name. Now I'm taking something uh, something else like his first name or something, right? Then he should we should be able to de define his name along with his first name. Of course, we have this no. Th this should also hold in that particular table. Next, a third thing is that transitivity. If x determines y, then and y determines z then x determines z we know this condition from mathematics right if uh, you know uh, x determines y and y determines z then of course x determines z we have seen that example also uh, wait let me show you that example see here uh, ssn determines did and did determines lot then we have concluded that ssn determines lot too so this is the example of transitivity right so yeah this is uh, all about the closure of uh, the FT. So we say if at all the any particular instance uh, holds all of these three rules, then we can say that particular functional dependency is implied on that particular relation. So let's look at an example to understand all that we have learned till now about functional dependencies. Right. So we have a table instance, like we have a relational schema of of table contracts and we have attributes like contract id supplier id project id department id path id quantity and then value so this this thing here is a shorthand for writing the relational schema because it's difficult to write the entire schema always right so i explained you that particular shorthand here i have symbolized with this table it's just a flow that you know goes and i'll explain what it is right so the meaning of the shorthand is that we have a contract with some contract IDC such that it is an agreement with a particular supplier SID. That person will supply some Q items of part P to a project J associated with a department D and the value V of that contract is the value that we have in our schema. Right. This is the meaning of this particular short end. Right. So let's look at the following you know the known uh, at these to hold we know candidate key i mean contract id is the key so of course c determines this entire instance right so the first functional dependency is that c determines csjdpqe right a project purchases a given part using a single contract of course a I mean one project will give one part for one contract right so jp determines c right third assumption is that a department purchases at most one part from one supplier one um, from one supplier we will be uh, you know purchasing one part so of course sd determines p now that we have three considerations or three you know uh, fds let's look at the underlying fds that we can uh, compute or determine using the three rules that we have learned which are reflexivity, uh, augmentation and transitivity. 
right a first thing is that since we know uh, jp determines c we also know another thing c determines c is jdp qv right so of course jp determines c and c determines this according to transitivity what do we say jp determines c is gdp also we said a if a determines b and b determines c we say a determines c according to transitivity i have determined another ft cool so second consideration we have st determines p right according to augmentation i can say i can uh, take a uh, additional attribute which is say which is which determines project sdj also determines jp where jp determines c s j d p v q then i can say s d j determines c s d j p v q this is according to transitivity right so that we have computed all the underlying fds that are present by considering or by considering you know the known fds so now you can say this particular uh, you know this particular three things holds on this particular instance because it is satisfying all the constraints so guys this is all about functional dependencies i'll meet you in the next lecture where we'll be discussing the next important topic which is normal forms of a fourth chapter till then stay tuned thank you